Hey everybody, welcome to the Pals Podcast. My name is George Boutsalis. And I'm your other pal, Ricky Liordi. Before you go any farther, we have one thing to say. Thanks so much to everybody who is tuned in and coming back to tune in again. We love you all. Thank you for the support. For those of you who are new listeners, we ask one thing. Please take a second to go like, subscribe, and follow the Pals Podcast. You can do so on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, Instagram, TikTok, every social. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And we'd like to give a special shout out to the people who keep the lights on. Our presenting sponsor, Cottage Springs. Guys, if you haven't had a Cottage Springs yet this summer, you need to go to LCBO right now and go buy some. Their new vodka lemonade is absolutely fire. One gram, is, one gram of sugar, one gram of carbs, and a whole boatload of taste. This thing's amazing. It tastes so good. Super refreshing. Guys, trust me. If you're at Trinity, you're at Stanley, you're at the cottage, no matter where you are, this is the drink you want. Or if you're with a group of pals like we are, then grab their four liter box of vodka water. That is also absolutely straight fire. Slap the bag, put it down, LFG, drink it, Cottage Springs. Give them a follow on socials as well. Oh, you, if you don't know, you're about to know. Our next sponsor is our baby, our passion project turn global social media app, taking over the world and fixing social media one vote at a time, Cast. Guys, I'm going to tell you what Cast is. Cast is a social voting app. We're on a mission to create a safe space to share your honest opinion and see an instant snapshot of what people really think. We're turning bystanders into active participants in every conversation. Now, you might say, George, doesn't social media like that already exist? Well, the answer is no, and you'll, you'd be wrong. Guys, there's a reason why we're doing what we're doing. Social media has become a place filled with subjective data, dishonest opinions, and biased narratives. We're bringing objective truth, honesty, and transparency to social media to create a real representation of what people really think. If you want to check out Cast and get on today and be part of the conversation, you can go to www.joincast.co backslash download. You can find Cast on the App Store and the Play Store. Just look for the purple C. And that's all. Without further ado, LFG. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll stop Great. And start. We changed it, remember? Well, it's okay. No, it's okay. Leave it. Leave it. We're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah, we, we just recently changed up our intro because uh, sometimes me and George forget to do our intros. Not sometimes. The, like the last 10 episodes, we... We have a guest, and then what we'll do is like, because they're usually like they either if they're here after or we're like in a rush to go somewhere. We find it kind of odd to like do the intro and hype mm. them up at the beginning, mm-hmm. but then we're like, we might as well just get out of the way so we stop forgetting. So now Rick has a new format of his intro, and we'll I'll get right into it. <laughs> so we'd like to welcome Rosalyn and Ellen to the podcast. You guys are the fa- or you ladies, sorry, are the founders of the Gist, which is a sports media blog which is tailored towards women and kind of emphasizing women in sports correct yeah so there we go that's i have one thing i want to ask because i was on the way over i was looking at it so it's written in capitals so i'm assuming it's an acronym for something and it, i yeah was no it? it's not no it's, it's fully not we get that a lot because i thought i was like girls in sports and i was like what's the totally. t stand for so many people were like it's girls in sports talk but no oh, it's, it's, I like yeah that, yeah i was like you know what talk. that's cheeky but no it's it's the gist you're getting the gist of what's okay. happening in the sports world but that well it made sense with the podcast the gist of it right mm-hmm. so that's yeah. what i figured ah. exactly so i was like looking at it I was like it's in capital so typically capitals but not i shouldn't assume it means an acronym but i was like okay maybe it does it seems like it makes sense my fault no, we just wanted to separate it out from the gist as something to say. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Okay. the gist as a company versus the gist as a phrase. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like the easy question to start off is like, how did things start? I mean, I know the concept was to, you know, bring more attention to like female sports and, and, and content, and that kind of stuff. But like what inspired you guys to start? Like when was that? Like it clicked. Let's let's start this company and start the gist. You go for it, Ross. <laughs> um, I guess so context wise, Ellen, JC and I, am I good? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ellen, JC and I are all friends from business school. We went to Queens. Um, and Ooh. so we're. <laughs> Where'd you go? go? Western. Oh, oh did no. you? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks Uh-oh. for life. Yeah. Oh, shit. Sorry, just kidding. I'm going to Queens. Holds up uh, a number yeah. four. <laughs> <laughs> that was really embarrassing, Rick. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Continue. No, no, you're all good. You're all good. Um, but yeah, we were all working in Toronto in different areas of financial services, 
professional kind of corporate roles as you do and just noticed as I'm sure you guys have how like sports are such a big part of our culture and our society and community um but for myself not not speaking for Ellen who is a super avid sports fan but for myself and for JC um we didn't always feel included in that you know um as women and even as women who grew up playing sports um just like didn't always feel like it was for us because of the way that sports is kind of in the media. It's super male dominated, doesn't always um, resonate because there's no female coverage. There's no female um, journalists. Um, and so we were all getting together for dinner and some wine and Ellen was going off. That's how every good business starts, eh? <laughs> always Nice wine. bottle of wine. Yeah. yeah. Take out of wine. Always. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, just catching up and, uh, Ellen started going off about a big Maple Leafs game that happened the night before um, and why it was a big deal. It was like a rebuild year or something like that. And JC and I were kind of like, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sick, Ellen. <laughs> no, exactly. We were like, oh, okay. That's like something everyone was talking about at the office today, but we didn't really know like the context behind that. And so that's when we kind of had this like aha moment of, we really enjoy getting sports when it's coming from your sports obsessed, like funny best friend who, can give you the background on stuff and who's like passion really comes through in it. Um, but not from kind of what was already out there. Um, so why don't we create something to, to fill that need? That's really cool. And I guess who it helps, like I'm, this is an assumption, but like being in the office, hearing it, maybe a lot of guys talking about it. It's okay. I don't really understand the context. Maybe talking about a different <laughs> angle of it. So maybe you can target like, like if I want to consume this, how would I want to hear it? Like you said, like from your friend kind of conversational, but also maybe a different perspective that, I want to take I guess like mm -hmm. yeah I think the biggest thing that we are doing at the gist is curating and contextualizing sports news in a really accessible and witty way so it feels a little bit more conversational and inclusive and welcoming and really for all sports fans I think at the beginning it really was more tailored to women but I think a huge thing that we notice is that the traditional sports media is really targeting that avid sports fan whether or not you're male or female and so for us now we think about our audience as just underserved sports fans that want something different so whether you're a male female whether you're an avid fan or or a casual fan and you're just looking for something different we'll talk about what happened in last night's game but we're also going to talk about Richard Sherman that's maybe not something that you would see with his domestic you know altercation that just happened last week like not something you would correct, see politically correct way to say that <laughs> exactly right? domestic altercation um not something that you would necessarily see on TSN and like actually get into it or actually get into things with like take a knee or actually talk about the WNBA in the same newsletter that we talk about the NBA. And so that's a big thing for us is a level playing field. So we provide context both on men's and women's sports in the same place in the same newsletter. So we have a free three times weekly newsletter, but then all of our writers and journalists are women. So we're centering female voices, but we're talking about literally all sports. So you don't necessarily have to go on, watch an hour long, you know, sports center. You don't have to watch hours long game. It's like, come get the gist. We'll tell you everything that you need to know. Don't worry about it. We've got your back. So is it fair to say then the approach taken is to like take an unbiased approach at like coverage across different channels. So like this sport doesn't get more than this sport. This gender doesn't get more than this gender. It's kind of equal across or is it different? It's different. Okay. It's different. So I would say we are very, we just listen to our audience so much and we collect so much feedback from them. We track what they're clicking on. We get so many emails from them, so many DMs. We track all of our social content to really understand what they like and what they're into. So our job is definitely to say, okay, we know what's going to be talked about tomorrow. We know what's the big deal in sports coming out of this weekend. So we definitely want to be talking about that. But at the same time, you know, we know that our justers aren't crazy into golf. So will a golf major get as much attention, you know, as it does on the standard networks? Probably not. Or we'll try to talk about it a different way. Um, but then we do still feel like we have the responsibility to say like, okay, you might be coming to the gist because you love basketball, but here's a little bit of a nugget on football. That's like a one liner that you should know. So it is, it is different. And uh, some of it is biased. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Some of it <laughs> no, I'm just curious. Yeah. Like I'm just actually curious about it. I have no problem with it. You know, like more coverage amongst obviously you have to cater to what you want to like you're catering to somebody's listening. So yeah. you can't just say, we're gonna write this whole article about golf or this whole thing about curling. If nobody cares about exactly. it. So it does make sense. I wanted to ask, what, so you guys obviously know what your, your big stories are, your big headlines are going to be. What are some of the big ones recently? Ooh, big ones recently. I'm trying to think. Um, 
I think the biggest thing that we're working towards right now, obviously, is the Olympics. And so with everything happening with Tokyo and the pandemic and athletes dropping out like flies, especially on the tennis side of things, new bands coming through. I don't know if you guys saw, but no sex is allowed at the Olympics this I year. Heard, Hold on. I, I just heard that no yesterday. Sex. For context, Forbidden. you can assume I don't know anything because I have not watched news, sports, nothing. You got to like subscribe to the gist. I do because I actually love newsletters. <laughs> yes. That's where I get all my news okay. every day. Great. I've also yes. recently sworn off TV, so that means I'm not watching any sports so i'm gonna need to subscribe yeah yeah but i get all my news from from newsletters mostly business related stuff tech related stuff but Mm -hmm. so i have no idea what's going on in tokyo so feel free to explain (laughs) as if like even our listeners probably might not know either yeah so tokyo is a big thing because i didn't know this no sex thing was a was i just heard about it yesterday two days ago yeah i mean covid right just (laughs) keep everybody separate and normally the athletes village is like hookup central yeah that's that's why i'm like we've had a couple olympians come on and they've told stories and it's there's some buddies who are olympians stories yeah Yeah, totally so how that and how you prevent that i understand like are they, they recommending you don't do it it's no no it's it's literally forbidden yeah you're not allowed to go to other people's dorms in the village so it's basically going to the Olympics. To so be it's like picture you you have a hotel room. You can't go to someone else's hotel room. So like, where would you have sex? Well, there's a well, there's a way I think. But anyway, so again, yeah, people will break so the rules. Let's get serious. Yeah. You put like all these you know amazing athletes who worked their entire lives for this moment. You just completed your moment. You want to celebrate? You're gonna get drunk and you're gonna likely That's maybe so not get drunk, but you're probably gonna have some drinks and you're probably gonna have sex. Like they mm-hmm. kind of go hand in hand, especially yeah. if you're like winning. Totally. Especially if you're winning. So we've been talking a lot about that, but then also with um, Euros and all of the like racist online backlash that the English football team has been under, specifically the, their three black players who missed their penalty kicks when they were losing. So we talk a lot about the intersectionality with sports and how sports are such a reflection of what's happening culture wise, but also, you know, the how sports also drive culture and how there's so much part of that conversation. So getting into some of those deep topics on our podcast as well. Very cool. That soccer is an interesting one. It's such, it's the probably the most global sport. I would say maybe even behind probably behind basketball. Soccer is the biggest global sport. And honestly, I'd argue that it's probably still maybe one of the most race, like has the most racial racial matters in it, especially for like, anyways, I'm, I don't need to dive into that too much, but like, it's just, it's mind blowing. Like mm-hmm. how, like soccer fans, you take, it, something goes their way, they're the happiest people in the world. Doesn't go their way, they're the most ruthless fans in well, the world. Kill people, mm-hmm. yeah, totally. And, and, but it's it's, it's actually kill it, it's actually insane how it's such a such a world sport. Like it is the one that has like the World Cup, the Euro Cup. Like every country plays soccer. Literally every country I think in the world has a soccer team. Mm-hmm. And it's so mind blowing that like you know. Anyways, I, was, I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. I was most surprised listening to our podcast. Um, learning from Ellen that. Uh, the UK actually has like a special division of their police department that's for soccer altercations that break out because the crowds get too rowdy. (laughs) I didn't know that. I I do know that it's intense because I went to the derby in uh, in Rome. So it's uh, Rome versus Lazio, I think. So they both share the Colosseum or whatever the stadium is in in Rome. And when we got there, I have family in Italy, so I said, okay, we have to enter through this side of the, the stadium. Like you have to enter through this part of town. And I'm like, why? Like, what's it? There's like, no, you'll literally get like stabbed or shanked and stuff. Like, yeah. After the game, like people on mopeds will drive by with like little knives attached to their hip and like cut people. Oh yeah. Scary. It's insane. So uh, but when the game's about to start, so Rome was home this game. So they get two thirds of the stadium or three quarters of the stadium. And then the uh, Lazio gets the other quarter. So it's not like season tickets because they share the same stadium. So the game's about to start. Rome fans are all there. Two thirds, three quarters of the stadium slammed, slammed. But, like whistle blows. You just see an army of people coming in that like, small third yeah. section or quarter and you know when you like see like an ant farm you kick it over and you see ants like just swarm everywhere <laughs> that's what it looked like yeah it was insane i couldn't believe it soccer is nuts even in greece a buddy of mine uh he was actually guest on here dimitri he um he, wherever like olympiacos fans in greece he was eight, he remember told me a story he was eight years old and they were playing aek athens big rivalry in athens he was like eight or nine when he was living there and he got on the subway wearing a red jersey and it was all yellow jersey. he's a kid like a kid with his, bro- his older brothers two years older than him and like they're shit talking a kid in Greek, like in Greek, saying like get off the train now, or you're gonna be in trouble. That they actually have to get off the train. Soccer fans oh are crazy. And that's also Next why. Level. Also why so I, did, I saw Barcelona game a couple years ago. It was Barcelona versus Juventus for, for Champions League. They don't serve any booze. And in Barcelona Stadium, the away section is the top. So picture Roger Center, but a little bigger. And like picture the smallest sliver behind a cage. That's where the away fans go. Behind a cage? Behind a cage. It's a fence. <laughs> it's fenced off. Oh, my God. They're behind a cage. Soccer is absolutely insane. And I don't know how it's such a sport that like unifies people across the globe. 
but it also brings out the worst in people. Fully does. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so anyways, but the Euro thing was a, was a terrible story. Like, you, you should be mm-hmm. happy. You get to the finals. I mean, I'm happy because my team won 2014, so I don't got to complain. But, like, you make <laughs> it all the way no? there. 2004. Yeah. Sorry, 2004. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> You're like, I'm Italian. <laughs> no, it's a long time. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, it's so wild. Anyways, yeah, enough about uh, the Euro. I'm not a big soccer fan anyway, so... so back to, back to you. So a lot of yeah. the, the topics that'll do well are ones that relate to everyday people while also touching upon sports. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. you talked about Euro Cup... So the racism in sport is something mm-hmm. that everyone can relate to, whether it's racism, whether it's sport, and kind of when you put the two together. So you'd say topics like that tend to do really well? Yeah. Racism, mm-hmm. sexism, sexism, classism, homophobia, homophobia <laughs> anything that um, I think, you know, the majority of our audience are young, professional, on-the-go people. And so they experience a lot of those things outside of sports and in their kind of day-to-day. So I think that it's really interesting when there is that intersection into sports. And so those are the type of topics that we get into in our podcast that we don't always necessarily have space to get into throughout our newsletter when we're kind of covering, you know, a handful of topics that you need to know heading into your day. And we can kind of tease out a few things, but we can't get fully into our opinions and give all of the background that we want to. Um, so yeah, those those kind of topics, funny topics, funny things that are happening in sports, and then in addition to providing context and curation on the headlines. What do you guys like writing the most about? Hmm. Like, what are your go-to mm-hmm. parts that you love either writing or talking about? Well, I don't write anything. Okay. Um, I'm not on the content side. You're Ellen on the are. Finance, finance and business side? Yeah, well, actually all of us are, on, all, I would say, on the business side mm-hmm. of things okay. very, very much. Um, even though Ellen heads up all the content, she has her hands full. She helps uh, or is very involved with like monetization and like, financial planning like all of the everything um so yeah i don't i don't write anything (laughs) um i'm just operations finance audience growth that kind of thing just (laughs) rosin says just just. i'm just all of these three (laughs) other things (laughs) and what so what are your favorite things to write about (sighs) you know what i love sports like i actually i I, sometimes it's hard for me to choose a favorite it's like okay choose your favorite kid it's hard to do (laughs) um i love NFL football I could talk about NFL all day so in terms of actually writing and covering the weekend I love that stuff but I do really like the intersectionality side of things that we are able to dive into in the podcast like the podcast is so much fun to talk about and to open conversations and to think about sports in a different way or to even cover an event in an interesting and engaging way. Um, but I would say sport wise, I love the NFL, but then otherwise talking about the intersection of sports and cultures is, is really exciting. Who's your NFL team? This is a loaded question. <laughs> um, Are you the one that like, I like players, not like teams or do you have actually have a favorite team? Okay. So here's the thing. I was a Patriots fan oh. and I, I underline <laughs> was okay. So, but here's Honestly, the thing. I, don't blame you I would still be a Patriots fan. I know that Tom Brady left and like, I'm, cl- I'm clearly still a Tom Brady fan. I was a Patriots fan. I just can't get behind Cam Newton. Like he made one sexist remark in 2017 and he's gone. He's dead to me now, basically. So it's really hard to like your team when you don't like the quarterback. Yeah, very good point. Yeah. But there's still like the Patriot team. You're just kind of like, Bland mm-hmm. pages fan told the total cam dude's done. Yeah. Which will probably be done soon anyways. Yeah. <laughs> He's not bad. Like, this is last pretty bad. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we we need to get yeah, back yeah, to yeah. but yeah. We're both uh Titans fans, coincidentally. We actually oh, no met way. first year, like we're actually Titans fans. Yeah. Why Titans? So my reason was like I mean, I think it's like any sports fan when I don't when you don't have a team in your city, you just kind of like get lucky or whatever, however it works out. So what the Super Bowl was happening. Or it was not the Super Bowl, it was the it was right before the Super Bowl when they played Baltimore Ravens mm-hmm. back in the day. And my dad, we were watching him. My dad's like, who do you want to cheer for? I'll make, let's make a bet a dollar. And I saw Eddie George and I saw George in his jersey. I was like, oh, George, I'll take him. So I should become a Titans fan by default because I, just because of a bet, I guess. So just because of stuck bet. with him ever since. At one point, I kind of started liking the Jets because I like New York City. Oh, but that's that was like, that was like, that was like a year, it was like a year or two. It was like a weird time where I kind of just like supported them as well in like high school. But no, Titans, yeah. For a long time, and obviously right now I'm very happy because their team is fucking sick. What about you? I first came ever watched Super Bowl Rams Titans, and these are the glory days. Titans, and I looked at the Titans and like baby blue, navy blue. I'm like, I love those colors. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's my team. And I remember like Dyson Mason getting stopped on the one yard line. I'm like, he was in, he was (laughs) out. Like I knew anything about the sport. 
And then funny enough, I played high school football and our mm-hmm. team colors were baby blue and navy blue. So it kind of, yeah, it worked that out. worked out really well. <laughs> uh, I did like to, I'm still a Patriots fan because of Tom Brady in the background. Tom Brady, Randy Moss, like that to get, like that was, in my opinion, some of the most nice. fun games to watch. Those two just going off together. Totally. I always thought Randy Moss was the coolest dude ever. Um, Wingspan. Then, yeah. So yeah. he's, uh, yeah. I love, so they're my second team, I guess. Like the okay. only other team I have a jersey of. Okay. But Titans, yeah, Titans are my go-to. Titans all the way. I actually saw, um, watched them in their almost perfect season, but the perfect regular season. I went to that game. I think I was in like grade nine with my dad, showed up in like Ralph Wilson Stadium yeah. <laughs> with like all my Patriots gear on and the Patriots beat the Bills like 54 to seven or something that game. And in our section, the game when all Gronk had three touchdowns. Yeah, it was insane. My yeah. brother was at that game. Oh, I think. was he? Yeah, because yeah. I remember he was at the game where Gronk had three TDs and he missed all three of them. He was at a game. He told me the story. He drove there with his in now. In the perfect season? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, or perfect, maybe not. No, Yanni no, no. Yanni was too young. No, Sorry. No, that's too young. That's too yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. So if you were in grade nine, you guys are maybe 92s? Yeah. yeah Good match. How, how, how did you figure that yeah, out? That that was was I was in really grade 11 because Daniel Moretto, listen to this. Glenn, if you're listening. So one of our good friends, Glenn, Daniel Moretto, made a bet with a guy named Anthony Simplicio who also listens to the podcast. He gave him 100 to 1 odds. That uh, that the Patriots were gonna beat the Giants in the in the Super Bowl. Oh my God! It was a hundred bucks to win a thousand or something, or to win ten thousand. And Glenn lost the bet. I'll never ever. He paid forget. ten thousand bucks. No, he did it. Oh. We but we were in grade eleven, and I remember this because it was my grade eleven football year, and we won it. And then I just remember that that stupid catch on the helmet that just the Tyree. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I was thinking, I'm mixing the seasons up. Yeah, yeah it was a, it was a long long time ago, but it was so fun. It was it was kind of the same thing of what you guys were talking about in soccer. Like I'm in grade 9, this like young girl with my dad and I'm getting chirped by these like old men. You're getting chirped by guys wearing, like Glenn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I'm wearing Patriots. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" I remember waiting outside of the washroom for my dad and just like a bunch of guys coming up to me and heckling me and I was like, I'm, we're actually up 54 to 7 right now, <laughs> so heckling who's for? heckling who? Um, but, you know. We, uh, we saw tight Tennessee play at Ralph Wilson three years ago, 2018. Yeah. 2018 Thanksgiving weekend. We went down, I tailgated all of us. We've seen Titans so play a few fun. times. We saw, we saw we've seen Nashville. Ti- yeah, we've seen the Titans play oh, Nash, uh, in Nashville against the Jags. It was like 12 the to game, 9 no, or something. 9 to 6. No, no. Uh. 12 to 9. 12 to 9. And Tennessee won a block field. It was the most boring <laughs> game ever goal. versus then, Jacksonville. I've seen Jacksonville play the Titans. Twice or three times now. In Florida? So I saw once in Jacksonville, uh, Tennessee in Jacksonville, and we went super last minute, and that's like Jacksonville's kind of always been trash. So they were <laughs> like maybe 2-14 and 14 this – or no, I guess it would have been 2-13 and 13 at the time. Last game of the season, it's right before Christmas, so me and my family we drove from Fort Myers up there. So I was like looking for seats of six, right, because we are six of us. So I just called the box. I was like, hey, like, do you guys have anything? Like, yeah, we got ton- tons available. Go online. I'm like, look, we're a t- group of six. Like, oh, let me transfer to our special – events gathering section whatever cool we ended up getting seats on the actual field so we we're sitting on the field like the cheerleaders are literally from like me to the camera how they have because like, they suck so i guess these are like the tickets <laughs> for, like the owners and whatever so we're on the field it's, it's wow. like 200 bucks all you can eat all you can drink so we had four seats there and we had two seats in like the premium club lounge whatever again free booze free things we got a hundred dollars each gift certificate to spend in the store Mind what? you, but who wants to buy Jacksonville Jaguar gear? So I bought That's this so like sick. I bought this like cool like straw Jacksonville hat. And I just wore it backwards so like, you couldn't see the Jags logo. We I got a signed ball by um, who was a really good wide receiver there a couple years ago? Allen Robinson maybe. Yeah, yeah. So it was weird. Like they were just giving things away. Well, it's a big. It's gonna it's be gonna a big market year, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we're actually wins. we're actually going down. So just like a little side note, the trip we did to to Nashville the first time we ever went to a game, we rented an R. It was uh, Thanksgiving weekend of 2016, I think. We rented an RV. Um, us us two, our other co-founder Dave of uh, for Cast, and then three buddies. We rented an RV. We literally drove straight down to Nashville to Knoxville. So University of Tennessee homecoming game. Spent the night there in the RV, drove across to Nashville the next day, so the Titans play, and then drove home the next day. The point of the story is we had this idea for an app for like some guerrilla marketing initiatives. We're actually going to be renting an RV through the whole month of September and driving from here down to Florida, basically. And we're going to be stopping at like every like college town, sporting event, fun, football fun, stadium, basketball fun. game. Yeah, so we're actually going to end up seeing Jackson. We're gonna, the, when we end in Florida, we're going to see the Bucks versus Bucks versus Jacksonville. 
I can't remember. It's the Bucks game Twitter. and Florida Gators versus Alabama. So that'll be a pretty crazy weekend. Wow. Oh my God. In the swamp. If you guys have an extra seat, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. Who wants to join us? Yeah, yeah. Once we, we said once we have our schedule like fully ironed out, because we have to wait till Thursday the 21st because that's when they're going to announce the border mm-hmm. restrictions. They're either going to lift them or they're not. So if they lift them, we're going to fully iron out our schedule, book the RV 100%, and then mm-hmm. it's whoever wants to come, come join us. It's a little bit of work, a little bit of play, a little bit of both, yeah, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're we're massive sports guys. Like you, we usually every. I'm long not as weekend. big as I thought I was. As I used to be. Sorry, the pandemic has made me lose interest in sports. Well, Actually, you're not watching TV. Yeah, what about you girls? How has the pandemic changed your view on sports? Roz, what do you think? Hmm. I don't know. I probably have gotten more into it, but that's also really? probably just a function of Work. still working on on the gist and yeah. um, us improving our content and me being more into it. But yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, f- I feel like it's just been something to do. Um, mm-hmm. What about you? I felt like it was challenging coming out of the pandemic initially and being like, what is the schedule? Who's playing when? When are things actually on? Like that was really weird because normally you would just be like, oh, it's a Tuesday night. The Leafs are playing. I'm going to pop on. and Tuesday, you know. Thursday, Saturday, yeah, Leafs, exactly. Monday, you, Wednesday, you, Friday, Sunday, Raptors. Yeah, Monday, exactly. Yeah. You, know, you know when games are going to be on and you know that they're every night. But then for you know, March to July, you got into the habit of just being like, I'm watching The Last Dance or I'm watching something else on Netflix. You know what I mean? So you just got into the habit of uh, on-demand TV as opposed to actually watching sports. So I'd say it took a little bit, but now getting fully back into it. The only thing that I wish that I was more into this year is just the NBA finals, like the Suns and the Bucks, eh, whatever. But otherwise, it's I've I've even gotten, I feel like if it was possible, like more into sports and like more watching different sports like F1. I would never oh, watch. I love how, Do you watch Drive to Survive? Yeah, I watched it at the beginning of the pandemic. That's so how I got good. into it. I, I love that. I think it's my favorite sport to watch now. Now, have like, you guys watched Drive to Survive? No. Yes. Oh, it's great. So yeah. good, right? Yeah, I, I love it now. Yeah, I like never thought I would be a car person. You have to watch <laughs> F1 Drive to Survive on Netflix. It will literally change your life. Maybe so I'll do that so I got into my brother was a big fan um, and told me about it. So being the pandemic, I put it was one of the first two seasons I think were out. Or no, the first season was out because it was just leading to the second. So I watched it. I was like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like, this is so cool. Because you saw the storylines behind everything. Mm-hmm. Then I started watching the races. I liked it. Back, so my girlfriend is actually into it. I started watching Drive to Survive because her little nieces love the sport. They saw the mm-hmm. show, which is so fascinating because I'm finding so many more like girls and women are into F1 now. Just be, I, 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 which I never would have thought. Mm-hmm. Like I think like her three nieces, they're like in like I think a middle school, and they know they know every driver, every sport. They like have a favorite driver. It's so crazy, but the show is really does a really good job of showing like the behind the scenes aspect. It yeah. makes you kind of like you almost emotionally attached to like the different drivers and totally. to see their like their journeys and everything. A lot of people have like compared the gist actually to that whole concept because it's like huh. the storylines in the background and Very like the cool. human element of like getting to know someone that pulls people into sports. Yeah, yeah. So that's really cool. I, no, that's that's why I, I like it now. But people have said that the gist has done the same thing for them, but for other that's sports. Big praise. Do you guys think that F one has become more popular because of the personalities that are in it now? Like, let's say Lewis Hamilton, he's just a cool dude. He's you sweet. know, he's dating celebrities, you know, musicians, hanging out with Drake, all these cool things. Do you think that's helped like rise the sport? Cuz before that like Michael Schumacher, let's go 15 years ago. It's social media. You think social, social media, media? It's massive. Like like and I, honestly, I would argue that I don't even think you guys can contest this if you want. I don't think Lewis Hamilton is the biggest personality in F1. He actually seems no. like he's a lot quieter than than any of the drivers. Like you don't there's not a lot of storylines on him. I would argue that like guys like Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc like the young guy, the, the F1 is the youngest lineups they've ever had in history. Mm-hmm. Like Lando Norris, he, like he's all over Instagram. He's like sings songs when he's driving. It's like the most entertaining thing I've ever mm-hmm. seen. Like he's a very like, he's a normal kid. He's like 20 years old driving cars that like that are, that go faster than like the speed of sound. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's, a, I, I don't know. You think, done, think it's social media? Yeah. I think social media, but I think it's like basketball too. I think there's like the, both those sports really capitalized on social media. Well, like, like you compare it to baseball, which is a dying sport. No, I don't want to say dying, but it's on a decline because they're long games. The person, oh, maybe. I no, 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 no. You're I was fine. I say, did no, I trigger something? No, no, no. no um, I was just a really big baseball fan. Well, <laughs> so, yeah, same. I, just, I played. Yeah, that's what that was my sport growing up. <laughs> but if you think about baseball is declining, it's because like viewership. Yeah. Yeah. Be, I think. The, I don't think it's they've allowed their their athletes to really connect with fans anymore, right? Like they still try to. They sign balls. They throw balls over. They do like bats and stuff. But you look at basketball. You look at football. All these personalities in them, like 
the pregame lineup when they're walking through the the tunnel. It's all on Snapchat. It's all on Instagram. It's all over social media. You wake up the next morning, you see Cam Newton's like crazy hats and shit. Like all these celeb, they're not just athletes anymore. They're full blown celebrities. Where you think Mike Trout is the golden child of baseball, and I don't even know how many. Like, is he super big on social media? No. Does he I even have so. social media? I, I don't know. And he's Arguably, like, arguably, Shohei Otani's bigger than right now in LA. Yeah. Okay. Maybe as yeah. he should be. Yeah. yeah. He's a freak. Yeah, he's amazing. I don't know. I think with F1's always been huge, right? It's just never been huge in North America. Exactly. So it's always been something that people have paid attention to in Europe and Latin America and in Asia. It was really just truly not North American thing, especially with NASCAR. I do think Netflix made it. It's the fastest growing sport in North America in terms of viewership across all demographics because of this F1 drive to survive show. But I do think that social media has a play in sports for sure. I actually think specifically, I know you're talking about like basketball and football, but for women's sports, it has been like Mm -hmm. the biggest sole driver in terms of people paying attention to women's sports because in the same way that we're talking about drive to survive, this is the way that you can get to know athletes. You get to see their fits. You get to see their family. And with the women's sports having a little bit less of a stranglehold on rights because they just want to get their product out there because they're not on ESPN one all the time. They're not on Fox sports all the time. That's like one of the best ways that you can actually watch highlights and actually get to watch women's sports. So both F1 and women's sports are like fully capitalizing on this opportunity that they have right now through Netflix and um, social media, which is very interesting. This might be uh like, I'm not fully aware of this, but I was going to, um, I'm surprised I haven't seen like a mainstream documentary on Netflix yes. in regards to women's sports mm-hmm. yet yes. because like Netflix as a tech company and a, and a content production company has like, I think they've just like blown every other company out of the water and left them in their dust. Like it's insane what they've done. And they pump out a lot of sh- garbage too just to get stuff out. But like they've done a good job at capitalizing on untapped things like F1 Drive to Survive. Like I would have never, I don't think I would have gone into F1 without that show. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people I think wouldn't have. But like, Female sports too. There's always that argument, like they don't get as much attention and all that stuff. And people argue because of, you know there's not as much demand and viewership. And it's interesting because I feel like if they did a good job, whether it's WNBA, whether it's college, like college basketball for women is, is massive. If they did like a small, even a short, limited series or, or a series behind the scenes, I really think that would help fuel because like, it humanizes, right? You get girls, like younger mm-hmm. girls, seeing it. I mean, if young girls are picking up into F1, like you can only imagine what it would be like for like female sports and all that stuff. So. I don't know, maybe I'm assuming they will eventually, but I'm surprised they haven't tapped into that market yet. Yeah, like, like I would get on a WNBA team like yesterday. You think about like HBO 30 for 30 or about how they Hard ESPN Knox. 30 for 30. Is it ESPN? ESPN yeah. 30. ESPN, Hard 30, Knocks. Uh, Hard Knocks, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 you think about like NFL does it every year or they pick so one team. So fun. Um, I did want to get into this and I feel like now is a good time to to really dive into this. I, want, I do want to... I feel to, like I know what you... I haven't even talked about this before, but I feel like I know what you're going to say. What? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let's see what you think. No, what are you going to say? I'll, talk, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. I'm wrong. Uh, I want to talk about women in sports and the coverage that they get in the media. Okay. Obviously, that's what. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, yeah. it makes sense Naturally. now that the conversation's <laughs> going and you know everyone's a little loose here. I, I do want to talk because it's obviously a big, big topic: women getting equal pay as c- compared to men, the rates, salaries, viewership, everything. Um, I, I guess I got to figure a way to politically ask this: Do you? Th- how do you think women will get on the same level? playing field as men in terms of viewership and pay what do you think needs to happen do you think like the leagues need to step in and start throwing more money do you think it's on uh, like us as people because right now women don't get paid the same as men has a percentage of profits they actually get paid more than men um, which you probably are aware of maybe some yeah so, some sports right um that being said the the main argument is that women do the same as men they should get paid the same the counter argument to that is female athletes are in certain sports are not as strong as male athletes so therefore the sport is not as good blah 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 blah. so what do you in your opinion do you think needs to happen in order for female sports to become on the same level playing field as male sports and i think i asked that as politically correct as i could <laughs> well, politically correct, you just worded it well like to ask like what the what an opinion on like that's yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. only be politically correct but you can ask yeah anyway sorry it was yeah well, what do you ladies think needs to happen there, there's a lot that needs to happen i think that really what you're getting at is like the chicken and the egg argument right here with respect to women's sports i like to really look at past examples right so if we're looking at the atp and the wta um so talking about tennis here yeah. the men and the women have equal play for all of the grand slams and actually for the majority of the events depending on the point system of the events and when you're looking at sorry do they yeah 
I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah so all equal pay for cool. all the Grand Slams. Like you're getting paid for... 1.5 million in Wimbledon, both Djokovic as well as Ashley wow. Barty. Really? Yeah. I actually have never known. And Ashley I never Barty knew that for like the women's um, final. Like she has received the biggest check in tennis. No way. So it's really interesting okay, when you're looking at a sport like tennis, and then you zone kind of back out, and you're looking at the numbers in terms of like watching women's tennis, like they pull the same revenue, they have the same viewership, they have more social media followers for the most part, they're able to land way larger endorsement deals and so much of that has to do with literally Billie Jean King back in the 70s saying, we need to set up our own association but we need your support, we need equal coverage. It took her to like actually beat a man to have people pay attention. And so when you look at tennis since the 70s till now, I think that's like a really great example where yes, you know Rafael Nadal, but you know Naomi Osaka, you know Serena Williams, you know Roger Federer, all on the same playing field, right? And I think that's a really great example. And then I think, you know, when you're looking at these leagues, the biggest thing to me is that the NBA started, I think it was like back in the 40s, right? Like 1940s or something like that. The WNBA started in the 90s. Obviously, there's no history there. Like, it, well, there's some history, but it's just, it's 25 years versus 80, 80 years yeah. or something like that, right? Where um, obviously they're not going to have the same viewership. Obviously, there's way difference in history, but it's also the amount of money that was invested in something like the W at the beginning versus when you're looking at MLS, like people just threw money at soccer in North America for men's soccer. And the MLS took a really, really long time to actually get to the place where it is now. It was terrible. It was terrible. At the it was, like, I, and they I spent a lot of money on bad. it too. It was bad. The WNBA got like a lick of that, like not even 10% of that investment. And it's like basketball is North America's sport. It's America's sport. And so it's that like investment at the beginning where it – there needs to be money. You need to put in money to make money. And I feel like as as founders and as people Absolutely. who are entrepreneurs, you know that, right? Like you need to spend money to make money. And I think that media has a big part of that. And that's why social media is so important to women's sports because so many media companies are like, no, we can't spend money on the rights. We're not sending our journalists. We're not doing all this. So then it then lies on the female athletes and the teams to be like, fuck, we got to find another way to do this. So I, I do believe like we need to invest in women's sports and the media needs to cover women's sports in order for women's sports to get to the place that tennis has proven that they can be. I don't know, Roz. Yeah. Maybe add to that. Yeah, no, totally. I, I like like to draw a similar parallel between like if you look at ESPN and the gist, like how long has ESPN been around for? How long has the gist been around for? And we're starting to get a little bit investment. We've been around for like three years, but just because, you know, ESPN, obviously amazing and, and been around for a long time, but um just because they're taking up like most of the market doesn't mean that there's not a place for the gist and that there's not value in the gist and there's not an audience for the gist. It just takes yeah. um, some some investment. Yeah. Um, and actually, <clears throat> another company, like an insights and analytics company that we're kind of friends with, Sports Innovation Lab, did a recent study where they gathered a bunch of data, um, social data, so behavioral data, not just like survey qualitative of how female fans have been engaging, not female fans, actually all <laughs> fans have been engaging with women's sports. Um, and it showed like very strongly that the demand is there, um, that um, I think those fans feel more feel more favorably towards brands that have been put, put in front of them in the context of women's sports. So there's they're finding all these findings that say like there is, it makes business sense to invest in women's sports. It just, you know, takes like the first people that are gonna make those moves to, to do it. Absolutely. I do actually, like, I have two recent thoughts. I don't know if I ever shared this with you, Rick. Like, the why I think that the WNBA will, will grow fast and why I think that it'll, it will have a massive market. Not Maybe not in a decade, maybe in two, but, like, in our lifetime, we'll see them packing, like, let's say Scotiabank Arena, for instance. And why I think that is, number one, is, like, the, going back to the point about the NBA with social media, they probably capitalize the most um, because I think it was when Adam Silver was the uh, was under David Stern. He was they used to have really strict rules. They didn't let you wear whatever you wanted back in the Iverson days. They tried to streamline it, whatever. But then I think 
that was David Stern's role. Then Adam Silver was a lot more progressive. So I had to see that, oh, like people want to interact. Basketball is the one sport where you actually are, you can sit on the court. Like you're actually, there's no barrier between you and the fan. There's like that mm-hmm. connection. So I think by, because of that, being so close to the actual game, but also because allowing like personalities like LeBron and all them to have their own platform, their voice, it really like amplified the growth of the NBA. And you're seeing it with valuations of teams and viewership and all that stuff. So the social media aspect helps, I think, is doing that for the NBA. I think the fact that the NBA does support like the WNBA and the G Leagues and all this stuff, like you see because of um, sites like uh, Overtime and stuff like that, and like you see the actual NBA players going to see like kids games and WNBA games and all that sort of stuff, that crossover will Mm -hmm. naturally bleed Mm -hmm. viewership over. Like young people are like, oh, cool, they're there. That's kind of cool to do it. And it helps kind of promote it. But on the business side, why I think it'll also grow is Number one in the world, like people, like the the high net worth individuals keep growing. Like tech is making a lot more billionaires, and and all these people, and and and, and sports is such like a big big cultural thing. Valuation of teams are going up, but the one thing with sports mm-hmm. is that sports are finite, right? You can't just go and start a sports team tomorrow. Like in MLS, you can. WNBA probably will grow and grow and grow, but like you just you saw, uh, what's his name, Balmer buy whatever LA for mm-hmm. a stupid amount of money, and he's building a billion dollar stadium the founder of Qualtrics just bought the Utah Jazz and so forth. And like people want to buy these teams who have all this money, but like there's only so many of them and eventually they're going to stop circulating hands that you want to say, okay, like David Beckham had to buy in the MLS natural fit. But over time, people are going to say, well, I want to buy it. I want to get in the sports world. Where do I get in? Well, I you know I can't buy an NBA team because it's worth $6 billion now. Maybe I can get a WNBA team for less and help start to fuel growth. And then you'll start to see more high profile individuals buying teams and then fueling it and like making those marquee names. That's my thoughts. I don't know when it's going to come true, but I'm starting to think that over time it will. It takes time naturally because MLS, again, was absolute trash when you first got here. Like, watching TFC was was painful. And now it's one of my favorite sports events to go to. Like, I actually love watching. They play tonight in Toronto. Mm-hmm. TFC. No. Mm-hmm. Saturday. Yeah. July. Damn, I should have known that. We have sponsored TFC, yeah. too. Um, I, I have a second part to this question. When do you think, at what point in our lifetimes, maybe, maybe, you know, 2100, when do you think that... 2100. M- yeah. 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 Next century. Yeah. Uh, when do you think men and women will get paid the same in every sport across the board? Oh my god. Oh, sorry, maybe not every, the major sports. The so major you know, sports. The major sports. The six whatever major sports. Okay, so tennis we're good. Golf I think could get there actually. So golf's quite the soon. one that you, you didn't mention. Golf, golf I think is the next one. Golf I think could get there really fast. I think what's interesting with those individual sports, and especially a sport like golf, it's so hard. And the minute you play golf, you're like, oh my gosh. Yep. And I think what's what's cool about golf is that everyone just wants to watch golf and watch people do it. And these women like drive a ball. Like they're they're so good and the sponsors want to be there and they're they're making good money in their purses now. So I think golf could get there within like fifty or so years, dependent on like if the PGA is still a thing. I know that they're talking about a new association with way more money for the men's golf side. I think golf could get there. I think women's soccer on an international stage could get to a better proportion. I don't know if you guys, a book recommendation would be Megan Rapinoe's One Life. Um, She kind of talks about everything that the U.S. women's national team has been going through with respect to their fight to equal pay and their fight with U.S. soccer, but also on the FIFA side of things and their bonuses with the World Cup. Like I think with the U.S. women's national team driving so much change, I think soccer at an international level could get more proportionate in terms of their what they get in terms of bonus from the revenue they drive. So sorry, I did want to ask this because I remember seeing a TikTok about this maybe a year ago. I don't know if it's true or not. It, again, things you see on TikTok are... They could be you got a fact small, check. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I, it was about the women's national team that the women's United States national team took more. They earned more revenue and got paid less since twenty since the, since twenty sixteen. Okay, so the one I saw was kind of that they got paid more of a percentage than the male than the males did of total revenue. Sorry, sorry, I don't I don't know the story at all. So they they so, earned more revenue, like uh, the team brought in more revenue. Yeah, for, from like a media perspective, wow. Yeah, the team the team fully earned more revenue That's for crazy. U.S. Olympic soccer since they won the World yeah, Cup legit. in 2015. The yeah. Like so, since 2015, when they won the World Cup when it was in Canada, to them like most recently winning the World Cup last year, or I guess two years ago now. That's so weird, COVID. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah so they they've earned more revenue 
than the men's team and they during that less. time and they still got paid less from proportionally but then it's also things like no private jets still have to shack up with a roommate when they're going to tournaments okay. still had to play on turf fields for like the longest yeah. time so it was the pay but it was also how they were treated in terms of like women's pro athletes are treated like men's semi-pro athletes basically right okay. so it's like you're playing in the ahl or the ohl when you're a WNBA player, a PWHPA player. Sure. Okay. Yeah. But also, just on that point, like on the on the, ter- the aspect of like, and I'm, this is an assumption because I don't know if like the private jet aspect is like a team USA jet or whatever, but also then if you take it farther, like the women's like career day to day, they don't earn as much. So naturally like those, this is not even a good point because it's not really a fair assumption. I'm going to drop this point. Like, <laughs> no so I'm trying to like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I don't know where I'm going with that point. Um, we'll okay, point. so d- soccer, we think. In <clears throat> soccer, the next- I think like 50 years will get more proportionate. Like okay. the, the amount of viewership, for example, that came in through the World Cup to bonus was just like, I think it was something like 10 or 15% than that of the men. So it's just like not equal on that there. But I think women's soccer internationally could do something. I'm not sure about the NWSL or like the WAFL, FSL, um, or the FL um, over in Europe. Like, I don't know about the leagues. Like, that's a totally different thing. But I think at an international level, it could get there. WNBA, it's, it's, it's hard, right? Like, it's going to be cat and mouse because, like, the NBA is just going to continue to grow. The NHL is going to continue to grow. It's going it, to – it's hard to catch up to something that has years and years and years of history on you and you're still living in this, like, patriarchal system and you still have a bunch of people being, like – it's way worse of a game. Why would I watch the WNBA when I could watch high school basketball? Like you're still <laughs> going to have people say that stuff and they're going to, you know, end up watching other things. It's going to improve. I have no idea when it will actually get to be equal or if it will be equal in some of these team sports. Rosalind. Yeah. I, yeah, I would tend to agree with all that. Um, I don't know. Like they're, there might be opportunity to do things differently and, and more creative, whether that's like different revenue generation models, like c- coming back to this study, like fans of female sports are like the most cutting mm-hmm. edge when it comes to like new digital formats and stuff, because they've had to be really creative about where they get their sports. So I think there could be opportunities for like teams and like women's sports bodies to capitalize on that and maybe do things their own way instead of trying to copy the men's model. Um, that could help, I think, move things along a little bit faster. But it is still tough when you're, like, operating in the patriarchy, right? (laughs) I I thought about this, obviously, when we were talking about this and when I found that you guys were coming. I need to stop saying you guys. Sorry, I apologize. We we say you guys. Okay, dude. Random fun fact. I was uh, in an old job of mine. I was in uh, sales. So I I had to cold call someone. And I said, you guys. And Lay's like, excuse me? I was like, sorry? (laughs) She's like, I'm a woman. I was like, okay. Sorry, what? what the, she said, you guys. I was like, oh, it's just like a, a phrase for like, you know, your company, you guys. She's like, no, don't ever say that. I was like, oh shit, my apologies. So personal you guys, preference. You guys are okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, All right. No, but I thought about this. I think, I do think women will get to where men are now within the next twenty to thirty years, you know, where they're making millions of dollars a year salaries. I just think by that time, men are going to be so much higher too, just because as the sport mm-hmm. goes, there's exactly. more money gets put into them. I do think they're tied together, but I don't think in our lifetime. Will they be equal? No. Sorry, I want to ask that because I've never heard that. You think that in women's sports overall, 20 years will be where the guys are today? Like, like making Mike Trout money, like it's $400 million? So I, maybe like, not like in the next the, 20 years, but in our lifetime. Average or like is the peak players because like no, I, I think like a lot crazy of, money's thrown around. So like, let's say like the WNBA, for example. I do think some of those women in the next 20, 30 years will be making million dollar salaries a year. Oh, sure, sure. But by that point, you know, the, the bottom level NBA players making... Five so you're saying the average, like that net average, not yeah. LeBron, just the net average of the league, if you average the whole league yeah. right now, women will get the point of like the average salary. Yeah, I think in the next like 30, 40, 50 pretty, years, I think they'll be there. It's a lot. But by that's then, I think the that's men are going to be even higher. Like yeah, I remember the, the average salary paid, in the NBA is like 20 mil yeah, so a like year. The highest paid WNBA yeah. player is like 400, 500K. Is so the average rookie, for NBA, the like rookie, the entry level contract for the NHL is like 850. That entry level no, three, fourth liner. No? No, no, no. It's like rookie it's level? like eight fifty once you're actually like signed. Okay, okay. Yeah. So maybe like, rookie contracts are three thirty then. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, but once you're once you're like fully in contract, like whatever, it's like eight fifty. 
average sports by league nba is the highest 8.3 million average contract yeah per, that's all like think about you could be the it's worst like, player like that's insane yeah you sit on a bench the problem is like, well it, there's two factors that play in this game Bas that's why basketball i think like for women is the most comparable because you also have less players on a basketball team mm -hmm. like women's soccer could theoretically grow because of the demand it's a glo mm -hmm. global sport but basketball salaries on average are higher because of less people on a team and a roster you're splitting up you're sharing mm -hmm. the revenue yeah budgets Good point. you don't in think in our lifetime women could average eight million a year in, in our area. lifetime yeah but like yeah. Well, we're also th 30 so we have next 50 years. 60 like yeah 50, in the next 60, 60 but to but be, that like, just means but the from, men will be at like 20 yeah. mil, right? even if you go at four hundred thousand, like what's the average wnba wnba said 400 or that's, that's like not the average best. The, the average is 150 so you got to think about compounding too even if you go up by 10 percent a year like how much is that comp how, or five yeah, how does that compound it's a lot mm -hmm. it's hard it's really yeah. hard like it, it is it's a, really, it's a really battle I, yeah. listen i do think i do think it'll grow like i do think it'll grow fast because there's also like to the point of like i'm a basketball fan i'm used to be a massive baseball fan i'm kind of fading a bit but um so like i see wmb highlights and i actually follow the story more because of because of like I like NCAA basketball, but there's also a lot of like really good women's NCAA teams. But there's that girl, Paige Beckers. No, she's her, she's like a, like a European last name. I am trying to I've been th trying to think about it for the last like, twenty minutes at WNBA. Okay. She's young, she's like a rookie, and she you went off. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was like, I just saw her all over TSN like during the WA she's run. So sick. Yeah, it's crazy. But also there was the the girl last year, Sarah Nurse. No, I think that hit like a buzzer. Anyway, Kia, like, Kia Nurse. Sorry. Yeah. I can't remember all the storylines, but I do Ari see the McDonald's. WNBA. Maybe I see the WNBA like highlights a lot, and like I'll watch them because like there's like yeah. there's still buzzer beaters. Like it's still, are they flying and dunking like LeBron and these guys? Like no, so that excitement. But they is can. There. They can, and the, and the thing is though, like the game maybe doesn't move as quickly, but it's still like you got to remember, still like there's still the last two minutes, still buzzer beaters, still like you know like really like exciting plays. It's a different game, right? Like it's sure. not you, it's it's not necessarily comparing apples to apples, and I think that that's what people really get caught up in. And I also think like the WNBA and these leagues aren't saying like we need equal pay to the NBA. I think like the biggest thing that they're like is is fair pay and investment in the sport and media. They're not asking to be paid at the same level that LeBron James is being paid. That's not what they're for asking sure. for. I think the equal pay comes in more so when you're looking at the U.S. Women's National Team and when you're looking at tennis when it's, oh, we actually are pulling more revenue or we actually are pulling the same amount of media. We just want the same resources. We want the same marketing of our games. We want the same opportunities there. So I think it... Th those players know that they're the first in like a long generation of of what's to come right so mm -hmm. that's what i think we still need to keep in mind with respect Fair, to yeah equal, it's, re it's very relative pay. yeah but at the same time too is like we are living in a time where a lot of like like you talk about like patriarchy and all that kind of stuff and it is true i mean it still very much exists no denying it but i think now like people are just becoming more aware of it and realizing that like there's still like there should be more opportunities uh, across every platform, every what sports related to like everyone should have the opportunity to grow. And I think a lot of, there's going to be a lot of, sorry, we're going to look back on this kind of time, I think in terms of that aspect and like women's sports and a lot of these ones, and they're going to be like the groundbreakers that pave the way going mm -hmm. forward. Cause even the NBA, you got to remember it is really old, but the NBA wasn't always the NBA and it was no. never an exciting sport. It was like looked down upon mm -hmm. when they merged the ABA and the, and the NBA yeah. and teams started to like really mm -hmm. get the man, like Bill Russell came over and I think there was somebody else it was someone earlier Jim anyways Brennan. no it was back in the day and it was it just it like it started to slowly take off but honestly even the nba like they've always been paid well but it really didn't take off until like 70s 80s maybe like when the when the celtics were really good in the lakers rivalry mm -hmm. but before that it was like an like, not obscure sport but it wasn't as in demand as like hockey let's say or football in, mm -hmm. in the states mm -hmm. so i, I think even now baseball, like yeah, those i think cool. i think with the like social media and like new forms of media like what you guys are doing like think about back even back then like when the nba was started like there was no like there was no newsletters like you're reading the newspaper right to get your mm -hmm. coverage and like I guess it's relative to the medium but you know a lot of these platforms whether it's social media podcast newsletters whatever it is new forms of media giving coverage and exposure mm -hmm. and helping do that like I, I do think it helps speed the growth up so it won't be as long of a growth curve as as some sports back in the day mm -hmm. that's just mm -hmm. my thought hope so yeah. yeah I agree talking about this when is the next <laughs> female sports event in Toronto do you guys know we have no idea depends on covid i think it sucks it's, it's now talking it's about hard. i want to go i want to support it's, it's i want to do my part it's hard in canada part. right because we don't have any professional 
teams up here outside of the PWHPA, which is like still an association Sorry, what, and not yeah, really what is, a league. What's the PWHPA? So the the uh, Professional, Professional Women's, Women's Hockey, Hockey Players Association. Association. So the That's CW a long name. It's a long name. Not they great they for always branding, apologize. I will say. They're like, yeah. oh, sorry. So the CWHL the Canadian Women's Hockey League and the NWHL were both in operations throughout like the 2010s to 2018 when the CWHL went defunct and the CWHL was a nonprofit, which was kind of crazy to think about. So set up in kind of a weird way, the NWHL was, was there. And so they kind of thought like, all right, a lot of the players are going to come down and play in the U S but there's a lot of politics in women's hockey and it wasn't like a cross border league, wasn't sustainable. They weren't getting paid well. So the top 200 players in the world decided we're not going to play in anything until there's a sustainable cross border league that we can play in. And they form this professional women's play players association so the pwhpa um which is spearheaded by jana hefford so like gold medalist for canada both on the world side and the and the olympic side of things and it's been a few a couple of years now that they've been in operation and their goal is really to how can we get the nhl to be involved and like basically create a WNHL in the same way that there's the WNBA, but the NHL won't get involved while the NWHL is still around because the NWHL is a for-profit league with investors and then NHL doesn't want to pay them. So, but that's not the right league for women's hockey. So it's this really interesting mix there. So all to say that's all that's what's in Canada right now from like a professional perspective. So the P the the women's worlds is happening in Alberta, knock on wood, at the end of August, which is very exciting from a hockey perspective. Um, which it was canceled in May, gonna happen in August now. Um, but then otherwise it would be any other PWHPA games that we could watch or Canada women's soccer games after the the Olympics. All right. <laughs> that was, uh, was sounded like a big disaster between the <laughs> NWHL and the PW whatever. Yeah, it's a disaster. Yeah. It's truly what a disaster. Yeah, that, that sounds. Bad. Do you know what? I actually I I like women's hockey. So I I'm a hockey player. That was my sport growing up. And I remember like Haley Wickenheiser, Cassie Campbell, so like sick. those ones. Like I remember when they beat the states for that first Olympics, where like the states won like the last five. And then Canada beat them 3-2 or something. I was like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm an Olympic like junkie. I love the Olympics. Mm -hmm. and I love Olympians. I think they're the coolest people in the world. Uh, but yeah, I remember watching that. And then I met the national women's hockey team in Washington after they beat Canada. So at our hotel, when I was there for the stadium series, Toronto versus Washington. And I'm in the hotel. And I see these women. They're all like, you know, like pretty, you know, good-sized women. And they're in the breakfast line. I'm like, guys, that's... And they're all got the team, you know, America jackets on. And I'm like, guys, what sport do you think they're from? Everyone's like, right, who cares? Like, we're all hungover. We're dead. They're, these women are just trying to get breakfast. And I'm like, no, these are Olympians. So it's a hockey team for sure. So I walk up. They're all shy. I'm like, sorry, what team do you play for? She's like, hockey. I was like, oh, my God, you guys just beat Canada right now. Do you have your gold medal on you? And the girl's like, yeah, I do. Like, I'm like, no can way. I please see it? She's like, I'm not supposed to show people. I was like, do I look like I'm going anywhere? Like, look at me. Like, I'm hungover in flip flops. Like I'm not stealing your your gold medal. I promise. Like here's my phone. Here's my watch. Like take whatever you want. She's like, okay, fine. So she like we huddle up. Me and like two of the girls, and they show me this gold medal. It's like bigger than my freaking hand. Wow, so cool. And I'm like, oh my god, I love you guys. <laughs> That's awesome. And then yeah, we saw them. So they got uh, during the stadium series. They got brought out to I guess during the anthem, and like they did like this big celebration. That was really cool. So cool. I have another question that I just thought of while you were talking about the, the hockey league. So. As time goes on, there's going to be somebody who tries to break ground, a female tries to break ground in male sports and be the first to play like on a professional level, whatever that is. I think it's inevitable it's going to happen. Do you think that will do more harm or good for female sports? What do you think? For female sports leagues. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. You know, but there's Haley Wickenheiser, right? She tried. She did, yeah. Like, but in, just, in Europe, but I'm saying like yeah. if, a, if a girl... Like a, female Women. makes like an nba team or like mlb and is like a f superstar like and can like does that do more harm than good for the for the female i think it team? does i think it does good like i think it does good you know what i mean like if if anyone can make any of those teams that's great um do you necessarily see that happening on like a league level where there's so much like politicking Things like that. I don't think it would happen. Mm -hmm. But see, like that's the. But if there's any goalie, team, maybe like, goalie. Well, goalie, it happened in hockey, right? Yeah, exactly. With Tampa with Bay. Yeah, yeah, like back in the day, only played in an exhibition. 90s, yeah. But 
I could see it from like a, a goalie perspective. Steph LeBay, um, who is the Canadian women's national team goalie, like played for the men's team for played for a men's team in Alberta for a while. Like I could see it from that position or like another position in soccer or something, a, a sport like that, hockey, basketball. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it would do harm. Uh, yeah, there's only three. Sp- Sorry, actually, I'll let you answer first. Go. I was gonna say, like, it, it could have the same effect as like Billie Jean King's moment when she mm-hmm. beat the male player that challenged her and said, like, I could beat you, and she showed him up. Um, like, it could have that kind of effect. But I guess, like, on on the flip side, if it's like about the women making the men's team, then it's like implying the men's are better, and there are mm-hmm. some sports where they're just different, played differently. To your point earlier about basketball, mm-hmm. um, it's a different game. Yeah. I just think that the reason I ask is like, does then that, because Andy, I didn't put much thought into this, but like I thought like if they go and play that sport, then it's like, you know, do then, do girls then say, oh, she made this team. Like, you know, let's say makes the NBA for instance, like a, the best WM player 10 years from now makes the NBA and like is like a legit player making the average salary, $8 million. And it's like, holy shit, like this happened. Does that then just maybe like lead more girls to say, oh, I want to make the NBA now. Not the, does it set up like, I don't know, does it just kind of like steer attention the wrong direction, right? Because like what like from a financial standpoint, if let's say a female basketball player a decade from now could make the NBA and make way more money and set herself financially, would it not be better for female sports to have her be like a superstar household name for the WNBA than let's say like an average player, but like it gets the attention in the NBA? Does it set up like a does it set the wrong message for the younger generation going forward i I don't have an answer i'm just curious because like i never really thought about that perspective right like maybe then it makes the demand to make the nba the drive for like younger athletes younger female athletes 20 years from now 30 years from now Uh, i'm wondering then it goes back to the point does that hurt the women's league if you have your superstar leaving let's say you have a superstar in the female league who could do wonders like if you have the lebron james of the WNBA, who is arguably one of the all-time greats and, the, and like LeBron James leaves the NBA to go play in Europe. What's that do to the NBA? It hurts a little bit, right? So it's tough. I, I, George, I see what you're saying. I think yeah, it would do know. more harm to women's sports for a woman to like a superstar to go play with men because she's just driving more seats into that sport, more revenue into that sport instead of her own league. That's my opinion. I've literally never thought about it until right this second, which I think is like. But there, there have been, and I do think there will be eventually like, a pitcher in the MLB. I do think there will be a female. There's pitcher. a girl right now. I think that's apparently like an absolute yeah. like so just throws you, pure kicker heat. in the NFL. Yeah, so I yeah. do think there will be a kicker in the NFL. I think there will be a goalie in soccer, hockey. I think there could be uh, soccer. I think it's within our lifetime, a hundred percent, not a hundred, obviously, but like ninety nine percent. I believe that there will be a female goalie on a like legit sedia. Uh, La Liga, MLS, like a legit league, there will be a female goalie in playing. You think only men. goalie? You don't think like soccer's like the the thing is, and I mean, like, I, I, I do. I, 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 may, I maybe I'm wrong, and if, if I am, please correct me. Men are just scientifically bigger, stronger than women. The sport is a little bit different. Di- yeah, it is. It's a bigger. It's a different game, right? So if you have a female striker going to get you know some of these male defenders where they're more tougher and the it's more it's a little bit more violent. Male soccer. I just don't see it happening. It seems more violent with the falls. We're with, the, with the dramatic injury. Yeah, I, love, yeah, I can't stand <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm Brazilian. Like, Neymar is like no, the, 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 the best Brazilian player. That's and like, I'm like, man, just shit. get up. The last five minutes of the game. Oh, nothing. You don't uh, fall at all. The last five minutes of the game. Because you are you can't. You don't have time. But all game, you're just diving. Oh, I try one quick thing. So to your point, you're saying, Siri, you're assuming like, let's say there's someone who's a superstar. Like you're assuming like, okay, they're not going to play for a striker for Juventus. But like, who's the worst team in Serie A? You're saying like the best female can't hack it on a team where like you know what i mean like they could yeah like i'm saying, saying like that's what also and i'm not saying this to like pander to you guys or anything but i think like saying you know like it'll be a goalie like i think that just also sets like a, a really low bar like why can't why can't there be a striker playing even in Serie b not Serie a but like playing at a professional level like i think in our lifetime in soccer especially like there's some really good females there's good female athletes and everything but like soccer like you gotta remember okay if you're talking about a hundred meter dash like I do I think uh, a female would beat Usain Bolt today? No, not today. But like they're not doing a hundred meter sprints timing it, right? Like running is like it's relative when you're running. Like there's what a couple there'll be a couple strides behind someone. Like these guys who play CRA, you could be amazing with ball control and not be a fast striker. Yeah. I think that I think that they could totally play. Like toss out Carly Lloyd on any team, Kadisha Buchanan, like they'd She's be totally crazy. fine. Like they would be totally fine. We like so, especially soccer. Like there's co ed soccer all the time. Like Roz and I play co ed soccer and like I'm we, sorry. We, we know, we know we, about the co ed yeah, soccer. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah, what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was from soccer. It was soccer. Oh, shit. Torn yeah. Achilles. 
Yeah. I still made exactly. it into the Pals Podcast Studio. Yeah, exactly. It's still humbled <laughs> exactly. like in. Very recently. This is yeah. not a handicap-friendly building here. We don't have our elders. No, I, I hobbled accessible. my way up the stairs. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah. My bad. Yeah, hobbled my way up. So wait, that, that just happened like very, very recently? It happened um, mid-May. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. it was like last week or something. No, I was no. Like, wow. Oh my gosh, like, if I could walk with... <laughs> No, that's crazy. <laughs> no, no, it's been a while. But yeah, anyways, I think that would, I think that could happen. I think so. Um, kind of going back to the gist now, where do you, where do you ladies see the gist going in the next three to five years, and what's your plans for? It? I guess this is a Rosalind question. <laughs> okay, sure. Business operations. <laughs> yeah, I mean, either of us could take it. But um, <laughs> yeah, our our vision for the gist is to be the go-to source for sports for um, all underrepresented or casual fans that haven't necessarily resonated with traditional sports. So um, we want to be a, a household na name at the end of the day and think that there's like a lot of opportunity to expand um, from a product and like content standpoint. So moving into different content verticals, expanding different channels, adding more podcasts, newsletters, that kind of thing. Um, and then also opportunity to just like continue listening to our community and our audience and understanding the different ways that we can bring value to them, whether that's from, you know, more of a direct to consumer, consumer facing model. So something like merch is something that we're dipping our toes into um, events, um, subscription, membership, like think that there's like a ton of opportunity those ways um, as well. You have anything to add? Mm -hmm. No, I think. Um I think you really covered everything. I would, I think also too, we like want to be a proponent of like changing the stats of female endorsement dollars, the percentage of female journalists, the percentage of female media coverage. Like it would be great to be able to say like, okay, we actually propelled some of this change in mm -hmm. some way and moved a few percentage points in the right direction. I think sure. there has been over recent years, like there's, you know, women like Megan um, from Stathletes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's her last name? Chaikia. Yeah. Like she's, you know, really doing a, a lot cassie campbell is now on mm -hmm. tsn's uh the score sports sports center, one of them yeah uh Haley wickenheiser again did a lot of stuff there's um uh, radford redford megan redford mm -hmm. she's on tsn or something so there's, there have been over the last you know let's say decade or so a lot more women in sports which is nice like i took i took a course at western about women in sports mm -hmm. and you know the whole class was obviously women mm -hmm. except me and maybe two other people so that was interesting so there there are obviously being strides strides being made yeah yeah totally Definitely. um do you envision ever like starting and I, I, this is an assumption because i'm not obviously don't know the whole medium and how you guys like um distribute everything but is there like a plan to like start to take that approach of like i don't know how vice sports changed things back in the day of like taking different angles and conducting interviews based on you know more cultural social matters more like hard-hitting stuff like is there something there, you know, like starting like something with like YouTube or streaming or something like that? Or is it you guys want to stick to like what you're doing and what you're good at? What's that vision look like? I think it's always a balance uh, in a startup. Like you, you want to do everything. You think that you could do everything, but it comes to a balance of uh, focus and constraints of resources. And so I think, you know, right now focusing on the mediums that we have been and really leaning into those, but I don't think it's out of the question for the future. I think video content and um, more so on the media rights side of things, we have no interest in media rights, but I think that there's a lot of opportunities on like the other types of content creation, athlete content creation, hard hitting content creation that what you're talking about, but um, I think in a different way for what we would want to be doing so not out of the question um sure. but within the next three years li maybe not it depends what our audience says it depends what they want that. depends what they want that. you never know they could be like yeah we want this tomorrow and we'd be like okay we'll do it but depends what they want what's been the most eye-opening or eye-opening or like lesson learned being like startup founders you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm, okay. Um, I would say recently, and this is maybe more top of mind for us, we're in just such a growth stage that the culture of creating a company and the way that you're hiring people and how you hire people and how you cultivate a team is something that is just so important and probably so much more important than maybe you thought you go from being 
the only doers in a company to being sort of strategic and, and thinking about who is going to be able to get you from square one to square three all of a sudden and the people who you hired at one point are going to be different than the people who you hired now so um i would say that like strategic hiring and recruiting and people management just is is so important Mm -hmm. yeah i totally agree and was thinking about that too um for me like i think one of the biggest lessons of like starting and building the gist is that it's like a long process and journey so you you really need to pick something that you enjoy working on and that gives you purpose and and meaning and if you know for you that's something that's like I need to create value in the world and be of service to people um that's like then do that and the people that you choose to do it with Mm -hmm. like you're gonna be spending a lot of time and going through lots of like amazing upsides but also challenges um so yeah if like if there's anyone out there that's thinking of starting a startup pick something that like you actually like really love and and people that you you would want to build with for a long time i echo that 100 percent. yeah i was gonna literally say the exact same words i was gonna say i echo that 100 <laughs> percent. Like, so true you, know, you, you nailed it like we again we have a startup too and like you said we want to do something that you're passionate about and work with people that you like get along with and you love we have our startup with you know george and our other buddy dave we're best friends we get to work together every day doing something that we think is going to make a difference in the world. So yeah. Yeah. I'm not even going to, I have, I have one last question because I think we're another point where we start to like wrap up, but um, what's been your favorite thing so far? Like one thing that like, you just like absolutely love about what you do. Just one thing though. Can't pick like 10. I, I love, watch sure, I love I watching feel, people light up feel, though. Because yeah. I feel like I, this is an assumption, but I, I like, I know for myself, whether it's the podcast or cast, like, I love everything I do. Like, there's nothing that I hate. I do like I do all the books and everything, and I you would normally hate. And I absolutely, <laughs> part of my language, fucking hate finance. I dropped that. Out, I changed courses at Western because I hate it. But you have to That's know how fair. to do it in a company because you have to make sure you know where your money's Roslyn's going. Roslyn's a CPA. Yeah, I no, money, we're, right we're, at the top. Yeah, I'm, yeah, some yeah. Advice. Yeah. I'm terrible at managing the books, but I do okay. Quick, quick, quick books, quick books is decent. We can chat. Yeah, but, yeah. I, uh, but I love everything I do. But yeah. like, if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick one. So, what's the one thing that you each love, like? Roz, you go first. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you keep deferring this way. She got you this time. Yeah, she did. Um, one thing that lights me up, like that I do, like of my, yeah. in my role. Oh. <laughs> okay, wait, you go first. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, gosh. Okay, Sorry. I'll go first. Does, so, it, are you talking about doing as opposed to the full aspect? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Okay, I'm going to try to work around this and like get a little cheeky here. But I like working with our all-female team. Like it's so cool to be able to work with Roz every day, Jace every day, this team that we're building every day that is truly so passionate about what we're doing and loves sports and loves women and loves business at the same time. Like it's it's so cool to be able to go with like-minded, brilliant people every single day, as I'm sure you guys experience as well. And then like, for me, it's like sports business women literally created my dream job. Like I, same as you, I, I freaking love it. So that would be the people it's and fair, just the job in general. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, Roslyn's like, George, what about you? What do you love? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer too. Like, but I like that's a while well, you're thinking. That's a fair point. Like, I didn't mean like literally like one task you do, but that's like literally what you did. You created like a dream job, which is, yeah. which is super cool, and you get to do what you love every day. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I have a like I I do love all the tasks that I do, and like I like how dynamic my role is, um, and being able to like look at the operations and finance and and dig into the numbers, but also like think of the big picture strategy and like resource management and how it all fits together. It's like a puzzle. You can probably tell I'm like a bit of a nerd and, (laughs) 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 but uh, (laughs) like, I I really like that aspect, but I think like, oh, sorry, now I'm giving to you. Like the, I think that the most special part of uh, the role too has been like the ability to watch like Ellen and JC grow into their roles and, as leaders <laughs> so sweet really nice. so sweet that is really nice um it's but it's true like i i'm sure you guys experience this too but like there's no one that you're like feel like closer to than like your founders some ways just because of all the things that you're going through together and like you are seeing how hard they're working to like get better for the company so it's just been like such a joy to see them grow into like our head of content and like head of revenue um 
She's so talented. Love that. Such a wholesome answer. That was great. Love so that. So true, wholesome. Though. Pumps our tires all the time. <laughs> you need that. You got to have the cheerleaders on the team. Yeah. Like the well, cheerleaders, cheer. Was that male, female? What? Anyways, just... Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Ladies, pleasure having you on. Thank Thanks you so for much for joining us, us yeah. today, especially with the, the boot and everything. Yeah, no. We appreciate you. And we know you're only in town. Ellen, you're only in town. For I'm only in town for a week and a half. I came here for you guys. Uh, <laughs> actually, no, oh. no, 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 no. Wait, where? Wait, no, where, absolutely where, not. Where, Love you, but I wouldn't know. Yeah, where's? <laughs> wait, where's? You like oh, going? You don't live here? No, normally I would, but COVID actually brought me out to the East Coast. Cool. Mm-hmm. Where, but I'm back for a week and a half. Whereabouts? Um, in New Brunswick. Cool. Yeah, very random, but nice. yeah. New Brunswick. New Brunswick. What yeah. the hell, man? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, thing. Ladies, yeah. we have two questions we always end every episode with. The first, if there were a movie about your lives, who would you want to star as you? It could be anyone from any point in time. Wow. Anyone from any point in time. In history, dead or alive. I always think when I, when I ask the question, I always think about who would play who too. Really? Okay. Um, I'm not really good at celebrity names. Who plays Katniss Everdeen? Oh, yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah. Jennifer Lawrence. I love She's that sick. for you. Yeah, She's I think. Sick. I you kind of sound like her. <laughs> wow. <Well. laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of. I I would do I would do Jennifer Lawrence. I think. Like, like you go like this and put, if you play, I can kind of hear it. Kind of. I kind of. Yeah, kind of raspy. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I, I would have to go with. Uh, Emma Watson. Oh, Hermione. Hermione. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see it. I love it. I saw her recently in This Is The End. And I oh, think I thought you meant like you saw her recently. No, I there. almost freaked out. Ros and I love Harry Potter. So if you <laughs> no, 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 no. I met Emma Watson, we'd be like, oh, show us <laughs> I literally just started watching them again. She's so, so funny good. in that movie though. Um, the last question. If you could give one piece of advice to your younger selves, what would it be? Uh... Okay, um, for me. Answering first, I like this. I know, I know. I'm like, you. I've used it twice already. I can't bounce mm-hmm. it back to her. Um, I would say like worry less about what people think and just like just kind of follow your heart and, and do what's right for you. Good advice. Yeah, I like that. Um, I would say similar vein. Like I think that... In in college and university, you have a lot of pressure to go one way or another based off of what you're kind of streamlined into to either make money, have a balanced life, do X, Y, Z, and you can kind of get pushed away from what you want to do and what you're passionate about. So I think spending more time to figure out what you love and having life life-changing events or like going out and exploring a little bit more and having more adventures to figure out what you are passionate about and then finding a way to intertwine that into your everyday life mm-hmm. love that mm-hmm. i actually have one more question <laughs> i normally don't do this last one favorite sporting event like sp- favorite sports moment ever live or ever and i'm gonna you can answer this too because ever like anything you've, you've seen or that you remember the most that will you will never forget where you were when you saw it happen could be on tv could be live anything honestly i realize how the hardest i have two but like <laughs> okay what's yours so number one is I got this. I was with Ricky actually at Game Six of the NBA final, uh, NBA um, semifinals when they beat the Bucks um, to oh go to the finals. My. So we were in the stadium. No, wait, no, I was at the Sixers. You were at the Sixers, right? So yeah. I skipped that game, which I regret. But we saw them go to the finals, just crazy. But my my first memory that I really have that I've never forgotten to this day was when I watched. I'm a big Texas Longhorns fan, so when I watched Vince Young running it against mm. USC, I was like in grade like ten, I think, and I was up at midnight. That's my favorite sports memory. Like seeing the first one I remember. So those two, I would say, kind of loaded question. But. <laughs> I have three. Tatum. <laughs> so the Raptors Quit. winning. Yep. That was like. I, oh, the yeah. moment they- I have a fucking tattoo of it. Like, love it. Crazy. Love it. Basic. Uh, that was that was amazing. I love that. Um, the golden goal. Like again, another. That was nuts. Mm-hmm. Like just. Oh my god, that was that was truly amazing. And what was my third? Maybe I only had two then. The golden goal, and the Raptors winning. Yeah, that's the it. two good ones. So we both got two. So you can pick two if you have two. Okay, my mine was I was there for, I think the it shot. was game seven of the of the shot. Yeah, I was that's there for the crazy. shot. It was it was 
nuts Great. to be there <laughs> like and it just felt like slow motion being there the like dun, dun, dun. and then like everyone around you was just like arms up like screaming hugging been like uh, i've gone to a lot of i go to probably all the sporting events i go to i go to the most raptors games and i actually could have gone to that game but i didn't want to be there if they lost so i didn't go i turned oh, the things no. down like, like right before the game i think i told my I think my dad went with the, i don't know somebody but i was like yeah i don't want to go i can't be there if they lose anyways they won <laughs> so i don't care i'm happy like i don't Oh man, it was a what good moment. You? You've been thinking about this for all like since I asked I the know. question. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to think about. I feel like when the um, women's and men's Olympic hockey team both won in Salt Lake City, and Haley Wickenheiser did that post game interview where she was talking about like how the American team was stomping on the Canadian flag, and she's like, "My one question is, do you want me to sign it now?" And it was like <laughs> the cool. most epic interview ever, and and they won. Yeah, yeah. And then I think like Joey Bats was pretty freaking we sweet. Oh, I was at like, that, I was I was at that, that bat flip. That I was sick. like, my roommate was asleep, and I was watching by myself, and I've never. I just like jumped up for. It was crazy. Crazy. It was insane. Like, there's nothing like baseball. Yeah. There's so many moments, but I'll stick with that. I, uh, so I, like I said, I grew up playing baseball, and I was at that game. I was sitting in left field, and and uh, Encarnacion's home run popped up right in front of me here, like above me. And from his home run, like I black, I, I wasn't even drinking. I just remember blacking Black- out. Like, I don't <laughs> seventh inning on. I don't remember the game. I was there. Was the most like I wish they won. I, so, I was so, I was, in, so I was in right field, but like where do you know where the kind of uh, the bleachers above mm-hmm. you? Mm-hmm. So like once he hit the home run, everyone's just jumping. So I don't even remember seeing the bat the flip, flip itself, but you just remember that home run. And I remember my third moment. <laughs> I was in Italy when the Italy won the World Cup in two thousand and six. That should be your number one moment. No. What? It was sick. Don't get me wrong, but Raptors winning is like that's, that's clear cut number one. Number one. No questions. My asked. siblings were in Greece when they won the Euro, and yeah. I wasn't there. I was pissed. Yeah, Italy right. winning, and I remember we all got because we were like sixteen. You're not allowed to drink. What well, we technically you're not allowed to drink, but whatever. So Italy won the World Cup. We all went crazy. We're on this little beach town in um, um, it's called uh, uh, Rosato or something like that. It's a little beach town. They win. They go crazy. We all go drinking. We all miss our curfew. This is like a school trip. Mm-hmm. We all miss our curfew. We all come back. The next morning, we all wake up. Everybody looks like shit. Everybody. We're 16, hungover. Look terrible. The principal's like, look, I get it. We understand this was like a once in a lifetime opportunity. We're just going to pretend like yesterday didn't happen. No one's getting in trouble. We'll go out. We're like, okay, cool. Next day, we went out drinking. I got caught. Got, got suspended for a couple of days. That was funny. But anyways, that was a little side <laughs> note. So that go. was my third. That's my third memory. Love it. I think that's it. I work. Yeah. I have, I could, we can go on for hours about sports, but like. Yeah, we'll we're, up here. we're up Ladies, up. if people want to find out more about your your lives personally and the gist, where can they go? How can they find you? Okay. <laughs> Are you really trying to pass this one on? This is the easiest question of the episode. The, the gist. You can find us at thegistsports.com. You can find us on our socials, Instagram and Twitter at the gist CA or the gist USA, TikTok at the gist sports. They got oh and podcast the gist of it anywhere you listen to podcasts. I love that name the gist of it. Yeah. Oh, and my personal is uh, Rosalind at the gist, and I'm Ellen at the gist. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Simple enough. <laughs> That's easy. Uh, ladies, we appreciate you coming on and joining yeah. us. Guys and girls listening, we appreciate each and every one of you. Give the ladies a subscribe lovely- to the newsletter. Yeah. I'm doing it right now. Yeah. yeah. Give them a follow, yeah. and that's it. Until next time. Cheers, guys. Peace. Thanks, right. guys. <laughs>